Hey guys, uh, my name is Amanda Tony. I'm the managing director of Stage 32. Stage32.com, if you are not familiar with it, is the world's largest online platform that is connecting and educating film, television, and new media creatives and professionals worldwide. And I'm excited to be teaching with you today. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to network to help build your career. Um, we're gonna be going through some resources that I think will be valuable for you. And most importantly, we're gonna be going over some best practices to engage people that you're trying to network with uh, as you're navigating a crazy life that we all have decided to live in, film, television, and new media. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I am one of the owners of Stage 32 and I serve as our managing director. So what that means is that I get to work every single day and I have worked every single day for almost the last 10 years and working with hundreds of development executives and managers and agents and producers who all serve as mentors and educators on the Stage 32 platform. Um, we offer a variety of services, including uh, script services and uh, the ability to have professionals review your reels, um, as well as uh, education that will help you along your way, no matter what stage of your career that you are in. Um, I'm also responsible for our strategic partnerships. So we are very proud to be the partner of Raindance Film Festival. This is now going on our fifth year. Um, we love everybody over at Raindance. And so hopefully you're enjoying the festival and uh, we, we look forward to continuing our relationship with them. Um, in addition to my day-to-day -day with Stage 32, I'm also a film and television producer. Um, I produced my first film, which uh, hit theaters last year, starring Rumor Willis and Emma Dumont, called What Lies Ahead. And uh, I also had a film that I produced in Hungary that premiered last year at Raindance. Um, and in addition, I just sold my first television show to a major US network, um, which we are starting the, uh, the filming next month. So I'm really excited about that. And then I'm out also uh, shopping another uh, TV project that I found the writer and attached a really tremendous showrunner and we are out pitching right now. So in addition to uh, you know the day-to-day -day on Stage 32, I love to keep busy with the producing side of the industry. And um, what's been great about that is that I've had the ability to network and talk with people all over the world through all of this, the stages that I work in professionally. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys today about networking. So the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, why are you here? And I want you to ask yourself, what are your goals? Um, I think with networking, it's different for everyone. Um, some people may be looking for a financing partner. They might be looking for a producer. You might be looking for an editor for your project, a composer uh, to work with in post-production. Um, you might be looking for crew. And the fact of the matter is that uh, networking is different for everyone. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and teach you guys uh, in, in general, different resources that you can utilize no matter what stage of networking that you're in, but really ask yourself, why are you here and what are your goals? On average, people make a decision as to whether to pursue a relationship with you within the first 24 seconds of meeting. Now think about that, 24 seconds you have to make an impression. So no matter what your purpose is and what you're trying to do in terms of networking, you really have close to a split second to be able to um, capitalize on that relationship that you're trying to build. So always ask yourself, can this, can I portray myself in the best way possible within 24 seconds? And the other thing I want you to ask yourself is why you and why now? Because when you're approaching someone for the first time who may not know you, why should you, why should that person be giving you their, their time, their attention and, uh, you know, time that they could be spending to do something else, maybe it's helping you know, uh, their kids with their homework or whether it's you know, them wanting to dive into a Netflix uh, show that they wanna watch. Why you and why now? What makes you important to the person that you're trying to network with and how can you be of value to the person that you're about to start a relationship with? So I also want you to ask yourself those questions. So let's go ahead and let's start with some resources. 
I'm going to go through a few things here. Um, how do you find your connections? And we're going to be going over Stage 32, and we're going to be going over IMDb Pro. Uh, we'll be going over Sonando, as well as Variety Insight. Now, all of these, you guys, are um, all of these are different ways that you can utilize your um, your computer to be able to network literally with anyone from around the world. And so I like to um, point out these main platforms because I think this is the best way for you to um, really kind of get yourself out there and network as efficiently as possible with people within the industry. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start first with stage 32. So one of the great things about stage 32 is that you have the ability to network with over 650,000 professionals and creatives worldwide. So you can uh, go into the browse section here and search all of the stage 32 mm -hmm. members from literally all over the world. So whether you're looking for an editor, a composer, an actor, a director, a producer, a financier, it is as simple as going into the browse section and picking who you're looking for and where they are located in the world. And since stage 32 is a global platform, it doesn't matter what country you're in, we literally have members from all mem from all countries all around the world. So it is as simple as that in terms of getting into uh, browsing within stage 32. And best of all, stage 32 is free. Yes, it's free. So you instantly can connect with people just like that. One of the other great things about stage 32 is uh, if you're on the professional side or the creative side, one of the greatest things about a stage 32 profile is that you have the ability to put all of the information about yourself on your stage 32 profile page. And if you, um, you know, if you have photos of uh, photos of things that you have going on, maybe behind the scenes photos or behind the scenes set photos, you can put that in there. If you're an actor, you can put up all of your headshots. You can put up everything that you um, have related to, you know, different looks that you have, and all of it is at a glance on your Stage 32 profile page. Um, in addition, you have your videos section. So if you're a composer, you can put up your, your music. If you're a filmmaker, you can put up your reel. If you're an actor, you can put up your reel. And any type of videos that you want, you can put instantly at a, at a glance on your Stage 32 page. You can put links to every um, uh, all of your social media. Um, maybe you have a blog. Maybe you have other things that you want people to, um, you know, to get in touch with you at. All links are completely available on your Stage 32 profile. So if someone's looking to hire you or work with you, it literally is there at the tip of your fingertips. If you're a writer, which I am definitely not a writer, um, we also have the ability for you to put your log lines in here. And what's really great about that is that we have a whole database of log lines where you can search and look at all different types of genres and budget ranges. So if you're there on the professional side and you're looking for material, you can find your log lines in under the browse section in the log lines page. I should probably also mention, um, you can also search people's reels also on the videos page. Um, you can also import your IMDb credits in here. So then that way all of your, um, all of your work is, is readily available on your Stage 32 profile. And then what's also really cool about a platform like Stage 32 is that, you know, the, the best thing about it is that this is really creatives and professionals all coming together. And what we do is we try and utilize, um, what, what we do is we, we utilize the uh, kind of the fun that you have when you're at a physical festival and you're networking with people and you're in a room and you're getting to meet uh, someone for the first time. We've been able to replicate that in what we call our Stage 32 lounge. And so we kind of look at this as kind of like a, it's like it's like our version of, of the forums, um, and it's it's almost like a, a cocktail networking online. And we have all different types of um, we have all different types of lounges that you can go into. So if you're looking for distribution for your film, there's you know over two thousand conversations about distribution, filmmaking, financing, producing. Um, and we also have this really fun, um, we have this fun uh, event on stage 32 that we do once a month called Introduce Yourself. So what's great about that is that people from all over the world come in in the Introduce Yourself lounge and just tell us about what you're working on and what type of people you're looking to network with. And what's great about that is that we usually have tens of thousands of connections that are made every Introduce Yourself weekend, which is the third weekend of every month. But again, no matter if you're creative or if you're a professional, there is a lounge for you, acting, animation, cinematography, post-production, transmedia, 
And we also have private lounges for people who are taking one-on-one -on -one mentoring classes with uh, the executives that we work with inside Stage 32. So it's a great way for you to be social. And one of the greatest things too is that we require every Stage 32 member to have a proper first name and last name. So you have to stand in front of yourself and your stage 32 profile. There's no hiding. So it's not like YouTube where you have trolls in the comments or things like that. This is a very safe space for you to express yourself creatively or to also um, uh, express yourself professionally. And everybody in the site is extremely, extremely respectful. Now, if you're looking to um, advance, you know, kind of advance your career a little bit more than just the networking side, and you're looking to really hone in and get some feedback on your, um, in, hone in and get some feedback on your projects, we have our Stage 32 um, development services. So our development services are where we work with literally a thousand development executives, managers, producers, agents, financiers, and they come into Stage 32 every week and they will uh, review pitches for you if you're working on a pitch for a project they'll review pitch decks they'll look at your reels um, we do script coverage and it's all with people who have been working in the in the industry for you know for a very long time so if you ever want to get some feedback you can definitely utilize our professional development services here um, these are all people that have films you know that are screening around the world um, films that are in theaters television shows, even award-winning digital series. And then in addition, if you are looking to also develop um, you know, your skills, if you're looking to maybe, if you work in film and you're looking to get into television, you wanna learn a little bit about that, or let's say you're a web series creator and you want to make your first feature film, we also have Stage 32 Next Level Education. And so our education is the, the best in the industry around the world. We have over 1200 hours of education that are taught by our mentors. Um, so no matter what it is that you would like to uh, learn, we, I can guarantee you we have a webinar or a lab for you. And exclusively, we also bring in top managers and producers who will work one-on-one -on -one with you if you are looking to develop a film or develop a script. And we provide all of that through Stage 32. So there's just a little bit more um, about our education. And one of the best things too is just, as I talked about this a little bit earlier, is how friendly our community is. You know, um, I think, you know, whether you might be an introvert watching this and, you know, maybe networking scares the shit out of you, it does to a lot of people. One of the best things is that we really do have an incredible, incredible community. So if you do start a conversation here, um, any topic is, is on point, anything is, is a safe space and you will notice that you will just get a tremendous outpouring of support and uh, you know, it, it, you'll just get a tremendous outpouring of support from people that are there with you in the Stage 32 community. And so I'm gonna move on over to IMDB Pro. Now, IMDb Pro is an amazing database. You know, I, I think uh, most people have this on speed dial when you are researching a project and researching people. Um, I think what's great about IMDb Pro is um, they've recently changed their interface where they're um, feeding in some of the top news. So you're just getting a constant stream of all of the trades like Screen, uh, screen Daily, um, Deadline, Variety, The Hollywood Reporter. So you have kind of everything at a glance here. And then with their, um, their box office uh, um, uh, section, you're able to see which films are performing each, each uh, weekend. So you kind of know who's at the top and you kind of know what's going on. Um, one of the great things about IMDb Pro is that at a glance, um, it's very easy to get information on IMDb Pro. Um, about uh, different people that are working on projects. Um, so I'll take, for example, like let's say you do find a company that you do want to network with and you think you have a project that would be great for them. I just picked up Mandalay Pictures just randomly. You'll at a glance have, be able to see very quickly you know, who is in there, who works for the company, um, you know, who the staff is. So you have an idea of who's working there. Um, if their management company will show their clients, box office, obviously, if they have films, and then the, the um, films that they're working on. Um, 
here's some of the cons. There, there, there's a, a, again, amazing resource, highly recommend you um, check it out. They do charge every month, but again, you know, I think this is our industry's most common database that we look at. So some of the cons of IMDB Pro is that a lot of the um, contact information in terms of email addresses are info at. So you're not gonna have a lot of direct contact to the executives that you're searching for in IMDB Pro. So um, although it's an amazing database, um, I think that's the biggest con is it not, not necessarily that it's a con, but it's, um, it's, it's not a lot of people put their direct contact information in here. Um, and then the other thing about IMDB Pro is that this is a crowdsourced community. So what that means is that people have the ability to put their own, um, uh, their own credits up and this isn't necessarily managed by specific, um, there's not like a database that's managing this for the authenticity. So a lot of times on IMDB Pro, you might find that someone may not have all of the credits that they've actually worked on. They've probably worked on a lot more. Um, but that is because this is a crowdsourced community and it's not hard data. So that's a little bit more about IMDb Pro. Um, in addition, uh, Sinando. So Sinando is a fantastic international resource. This is um, owned and run owned and run by uh, the Marche du Film for the, from the Cannes Film Festival. Um, Stage 32 is a proud education partner of the Cannes uh, Film Festival, Marche du Film. And so Sinando is part of that. So when you um, register for Sinando or um, also the American film market, you will get access to Sinando for up to one year. I think that this is the best resource for all international film festivals. So it'll kind of give you an idea of what's coming up in terms of international um, things that are happening within the community. And then they also do a great job of uh, um, kind of listing all of the upcoming news as well from an international perspective. So I feel like they do a, a tremendous job there in terms of just really honing and, and knowing the international market. Um, you'll get to see, once you're in Sinando, you'll get to see individual people, much like IMDb Pro. One of the things that's great about Sinando is a lot of people that attend can um, tend to uh, be in the Sinando directory. So you will find that there will be more um, specific emails. Uh, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna protect this person's privacy, um, but if you hover over it, you would get their, their direct emails. Um, and then sometimes people will share their phone numbers as well. Um, but you'll definitely, and even Skype addresses. So you get a little bit more, um, uh, you get a little bit more contact information from people in Sinando, but um, keep in mind this is primarily international. So if you are also looking at the US market, there aren't as many people that are on the Sinando database. And then finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about Variety Insights. Um, Variety Insight is an extremely robust database. Um, this is probably closest in comparison to Studio System. And uh, Stage 32 is actually, we are the proud education partner of Variety Insights. So um, we're excited to be inside the uh, Variety Insight database. Um, Variety Insight database is definitely the most comprehensive um, database that, that I am aware of in terms of figuring out uh, which, um, which shows are going, which films are going and the entire history. So it's broken down by both television as well as film. Um, and you can reach into what's in development, what's coming up, what deals are getting done, um, awards, what's in the production pipeline. You also get the box office da uh, data, talent list. This is talking about which actors or actresses um, are um, currently uh, available and what they're working on. And this is a very, very uh, robust, robust um, platform and it is uh, completely connected in with people within the industry. So you'll get up to date overall TV and production deals and it'll talk a little bit about, you know, what type it is, when it got picked up. I mean, it really is such a comprehensive database. I highly recommend Variety Insight. Um, it is pricey. I, I believe that it's about, uh, I want to say it's about $200 a month, but if you're absolutely um, dedicated to wanting to pursue this full time and you know you are looking to do this professionally, this is definitely a database for you. And what's also great about, um, about uh, Variety Insight is that you get the direct contact information to people. Um, so you'll notice like if you were to click on uh, someone's, uh, someone's contact information here, 
you will have the exact email. I'm again, I won't hover over it, but you'll have the exact email right there. So you have direct contact information. So this is really meant for 100% serious uh, people, 100% serious networking. This is definitely, in my opinion, the most uh, professional database that you can find. All right. So we went over a little bit, um, let me screen share here. So we went over a little bit about the types of resources that are available for you to find contact information for, for people. Um, you know, so going back to, you know, why you, why now, and what is your purpose for networking? You can help uh, from what we had just talked about. We can, you can help decide which platform would be right for you as you're trying to figure out and how to establish your connections. Um, again, Stage 32 is a free platform. Um, IMDB Pro has a, a, a small monthly fee. Um, Sinando is free if you purchase a um, badge for either the Cannes Film Festival or the American Film Market, um, or it does have a small monthly fee. And then Variety Insight also has a monthly fee. All right, so now that we went over um, the, 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 man, the main databases, which I think are you know, kind of crucial for everyone, I wanna move on to social media. So if you look here on the left-hand side, these are some of the, um, the main social media platforms that you could think of. Um, you know, for the purposes of this presentation, I wanna kind of focus on and think about LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Stage 32. So how can you identify which platforms are right for you? So, you know, ask yourself, which are a fit for you, uh, for you, your brand and your message? And also, which of them fit your style and personality? You know, if you're a filmmaker and you have a beautiful visual eye, you know, is something like uh, is something like LinkedIn going to be the right platform for you? Which is typically reserved for people who are looking to make connections professionally. Um, if you are a cinematographer and, and you know have some really crazy camera tricks that you want to show, would that make sense for you on Twitter? You know, and are the people that you're trying to capture their eye, are they really hanging out on Twitter? You know, so you need to kind of ask yourself things like that. Um, and on the second point, you know, producers may wind up choosing a more professional or business business based platform. Um, so, for example, LinkedIn, you know, we make a joke here on stage 32, we say LinkedIn is where conversations go to die. And the reason for that is because, you know, I, you know, I have a lot of connections on LinkedIn. I'm like connected to, you know, like limo drivers and, you know, like insurance salesmen. And, you know, at the same time, you know, when I'm looking for material or if I'm looking for, um, you know, something that I'd be interested in producing, I typically don't go to LinkedIn because people aren't hanging out there that I'm looking for. You know, so you, you know, so if, if you, um, you know, on, if you're on a platform and you feel like you're not getting what you need out of it, you have to, you have to literally ask yourself, you know, is this worth your time? You know, it doesn't make sense for a lot of people to be on a lot of platforms. So that's why, you know, if you pull out the different things that matter from each platform, that will be the best thing that will help you decide how you're going to spend your time, you know, and, and going back to things like, um, as I just mentioned, like filmmakers and screenwriters and other creatives may choose more visual platforms. You know, that's where you maybe you maybe want to showcase your talents on something like Instagram. You know, Instagram is a very visual medium. And I know TikTok is huge. And I know TikTok has, you know, more followers than you could possibly imagine, more videos than you possibly could imagine. You know, if, if you are looking to network professionally, you know, you really have to ask yourself, is that the right place for you? Because even though you may be dancing and getting, you know, tens of thousands of people watching you dance um, or, you know, do, do some things that are funny, you know, is that really standing out to, let's say, a producer that you might be wanting to get in touch with to uh, work with you on putting together like your next feature film? And you know, one of the things I talked about too is that you need to choose a platform that is engaging to you so that you won't abandon your efforts. So one of the things is that I'm sure a lot of people have said, okay, I'm gonna put in all of my time and my effort and I'm gonna get my profile up and I'm gonna start posting every day. 
And, you know, and the next thing you know, like a week goes by and you still haven't posted. And the thing is that with uh, the social networks is that you have to have consistency. So if you're going to abandon a network, don't start yourself on that network to begin with. Really, really, when you're going to hunker in, you're going to find a platform that's great for you. Find one that you know that you're going to engage with. And one of the things that we say here at stage 32 is that you have to approach networking as a job. Um, you need to use it as a tool to increase awareness and your branding and to push forward your creative pursuits. And ultimately it should be fun as well. So, you know, when you're looking at the platforms, you, you have to be able to want to be able to do it every day. We say here at stage 32 that uh, your craft is only 50% of your job. The other 50% is networking. So to kind of sum up a little bit of the platforms that we had talked about here, you know, LinkedIn, um, I, I can't imagine if you're a screenwriter, if you put a, a message on LinkedIn to say you're having trouble with your third act, I don't think you're gonna get a response. So at that point, does it make sense for you to be spending your time on LinkedIn? Whereas if you put a post in the stage 32 lounge, the screenwriting lounge and said, hey, I'm having trouble with my third act, you might have uh, writers or producers from all over the world coming in and giving you advice and tips. And then Facebook, um, you know, Facebook is a lot of fun for memes. I mean, lots of great cat memes and lunches, you know, pictures of lunches and babies and, and all of that. But, you know, again, ask yourself, when you are looking for help from another, uh, from a cinematographer, are you getting the feedback that you really need on a platform like Facebook? Um, Facebook is a really fun platform, but again, if you're asking for what you need professionally, ask yourself if Facebook would be the right fit. Um, Instagram, you know, we see a lot of luck with Instagram. We see a lot of people getting noticed on Instagram, getting involved with conversations. Again, such a great visual medium so that if you are really looking to get yourself out there, highly recommend putting up videos on Instagram. Put up thought provoking things that um, get, you know, questions that people want to respond to. I think that's an amazing way to use Instagram. In addition, um, you can always search popular hashtags, you know, so if you do hashtag filmmaking, hashtag indie film, hashtag actor, hashtag acting, get involved with conversations and meet other people through Instagram. And then Twitter. Um, Twitter has definitely become uh, a very, uh, um, it's, it's become a cesspool. You know, there's a lot of really uh, heavy opinions there and it's, um, you know, a lot of people with a, a microphone. And so again, the one thing I would say about Twitter is that if you choose to, uh, to network on Twitter, please curate your feed because there's a lot of misinformation on Twitter from people who aren't qualified to teach it. So um, curate your feed so you're getting nothing but positive news and you're getting the right news from people who are accredited and people who, who um, have the uh, professional expertise to be able to be talking about it. Um, and then finally, stage 32. Um, again, stage 32 is for both creatives as well as professionals. And so, you know, if you're looking for a comforting space and if you're looking for a positive space, um, you know, we are the largest social network specifically for film, television, and digital creatives and professionals. So if you are looking for support, you are looking for encouragement, you are looking at a, for a way for you to showcase your talents to many people, highly recommend Stage 32 as a great way um, for you to start networking. Um, but again, leaving you with, uh, you know, once you do figure out which platforms are right for you, you have to commit. You really have to commit. There's no sense in being on 10 platforms if you're only using them half-ass. I would pick your maybe top one or two, at most three, and I would put your all into that. But I think that if you're truly going to uh, do well, I would choose two platforms and I would make those platforms be the best indication of for you um, in order to get yourself out professionally. All right, so in terms of how to network, everyone has something to offer when networking and yes, even introverts do. Um, so how do you start um, getting yourself noticed? Let's talk a little bit about approach. So the one thing that um, I'd highly recommend is to post content that you find engaging. 
Um, we always say at stage 32 to make sure that you're reading the trades every single day. On some of the resources that I shared with you, you'll get a stream like on, on IMDb Pro or on Variety Insider or Sinando, you'll get a stream of what's happening in the trades. But if you are reading the trades, Deadline, um, Screen, Screen International, um, The Hollywood Reporter, Variety, if you're finding something that is of value, put that up on your social media, share it. Because if you find something very interesting, chances are that there's going to be people in your world that will also find it interesting. Even if it's something that may not have something to do with the film, television, and new media industry, it could be something that another, um, you know, like another industry has done, but you found it really interesting. Share, share, share. If you were engaged by that content, get it out there and have other people engage with it as well. Um, second thing is, to thank others for the content that they posted and pay it forward. You know, you realize that a lot of people do take the time to post things that they found interesting. And so if you are connected with someone on a platform and you find something that they posted of value, thank them for that. It takes two seconds to say thank you. If it's an article, read the article, respond back to them and say, this was a great article. I love how blank, blank, blank. And that is value. So if you may not know someone on social media, that shows that you care about what it is that they posted and you're providing value to that person because you took your time to uh, stop and read something that they also found engaging. So this is a great tool and a great way for you to engage with someone that you may not know. Um, you know, again, it's just really taking the time to respect that that person is, uh, you're taking time to respect that person's time that they decided to share that with you. Another thing you can do, the third thing that I could say on um, social media when networking is to ask questions. So, you know, I know it's tough when you start a um, profile somewhere and sometimes you'll, you'll write something and it goes into the abyss and no one answers. But the thing is, is that when you ask questions, you can, um, you know, you can really get feedback from someone that you're reaching out to. So like, let's say, let's say that there is a producer that you really love the film that they just, um, you know, th that they, that they just had screened at Sundance or something like that. And you really thought they did an amazing job and casting it, you know, it takes two seconds for you to contact that person on social media to say like, Hey Jane, I really love the casting that you just did in XYZ movie. You know, can you tell me why you made the decision to uh, cast XYZ? You're asking them a question. You're showing that you're interested in what they're doing. You're asking a question that is invoking the fact that you care about their time and the choices that they've made. So you'll notice that if you start asking questions to people that you want to network with, more often than not, they're gonna come back and they're going to look at your profile. And as long as your profile is completely filled out and you, you know, are coming across as very professional, you're going to engage. And the more you start to engage with people like that, those people start to engage with your, uh, uh, with your profile, no matter what platform that you're on. And you know, the, the other thing too, and the final thing is, is to remember that relationship building takes time. So if you don't get a response to certain efforts, don't take it personal. Now, there's one of the things that you know, I had mentioned is that when you do uh, post something that sometimes it's tough when you don't get responses, you know, and, and it, it is shouted to the abyss. But remember, you have to put yourself forward. And if you're scared to death of trying to network with someone or scared to death to be um, extroverted to, to um, reach out to someone, again, make it about the craft and make it about the art. Because at the end of the day, this industry is all about the love for the art and storytelling. So I guarantee you that, you know, people will appreciate when you're taking that time to reflect on their art. And then here's a little bit of uh, advice for those of you who are extroverted um, and some tips of things not to do. Um, first of all, a network request is not an invitation to spam. So if you do receive a network request, whether it's on stage 32 or LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, or if you, re if you receive some sort of invitation to meet with someone, do not, and I repeat, do not respond immediately with 
check out my crowdfunding campaign. Hey, check out my reel. Hey, I need money for a film. Hey, will you read my script? Now think about this. Think about your best friend. Think about the people that are closest to you in your life, okay? How long did it take to build those relationships? Think about the person that's in your life that if all hell broke loose and you had to pick up the phone and you needed their help, that they would be there in two seconds for you. Think about that person and think about how long it took to build that relationship, okay? That didn't happen overnight. So what happens is, is that on social media or on professional networks, you can't reach out to someone after just being connected with them saying, hey, I have a script. Hey, I need money. Hey, I need a producer. Keep in mind that it takes time. So do not spam anybody. I guarantee you that is the worst way that, to start a relationship when you're networking. So please, 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 number one, it is not an invitation to spam, okay? Um, second thing is sending a blind direct message with a request is a surefire way to get shut down. Same thing, if the person has not asked to network with you, do not throw your stuff in their face, okay? It is, you have to realize that, you know, again, with social media and with the networking platforms, which I showed you earlier, there are hundreds of requests a day on people. So do not give information to someone that has not requested it. It never gets you anywhere. It's not, it's not in your best interest to do that. You know, it comes, it comes across and it separates the amateurs from the professionals. Um, and that leads me to the third point, which is you have a microphone, but so does everyone else. You know, again, so you have to realize that everybody is getting noise, 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 noise. So how do you set yourself apart? How do you truly become someone that's giving value and making it worthwhile to give someone your time, uh, their time, sorry. Um, and then the other thing, number four, is that it's social media, not broadcast media. And again, it goes back to, I like giving this example that like, let's say you're at a networking event. Let's, let's pretend that we're in, in real life when, when we're live and in person and we're at, let's say a festival. And, you know, the whole room is filled with people that are talking and in conversations and you know, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Would you walk into that room and just scream, hey, I have a script, read it. Oh, hey, wait, I need money. Hey, do you have, have $50,000 for my next film? Do you have $50,000? You know, don't broadcast. You know, again, it takes time because when you step back and you think about it, you know, if you're doing this digitally, it, it's kind of ridiculous when you, approach, when, you, um, when you liken it to a real life situation because you wouldn't do that in real life. So there's no reason for you to do that online. So again, take the time. Relationship building and networking takes time. Promise you that. And I want to leave you guys with the rule of three, which is my final point here. So if anything in terms of networking, I want to make sure that you remember the rule of three, okay? And what that means is that when you meet someone, you haven't spammed them, you haven't asked them for, to read your script, you haven't asked them for money for your film, you haven't asked them you know, to, to read this and to share this and to post that with them not knowing you. When you engage with someone for the first time, give to them something three times before you ever ask for anything in return. And that's what we call the rule of three. So make sure that you're providing value for, for that person at least three times. And then at that point, that person will build the trust and will build the relationship with you to then when you at that point feel comfortable, you might be able to say like, hey, you know, um, I do have a, a script that I'd love for you to read. You know, would you mind, uh, you know, taking a look at it? And the thing is, is that you have given value to that person three times that I would guarantee you that most of the time that person at that point will be more than likely willing to help you out. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't be looking at you as you're just like me, 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 me. So it is as simple as, you know, put yourself on the other person's shoes. I mean, we're all human and, you know, it never feels good when someone's coming at you and saying like, do this, do this, do this, do this, you know, so put yourself in the other person person's shoes. Look, it takes time. 
you know, one thing about networking is that it is, we say it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you have to be willing to put in the time, you have to be willing to put in the effort and you have to be willing to treat it like a job. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation on mastering the art of networking. And if you are on social media, let's connect. Um, these are my three favorite that I've chosen. Um, my first one is Instagram. You can find me at stage 32 online. Um, second is Twitter, which is stage 32 Amanda. And then of course, stage 32.com backslash Amanda Tony. And I wish you guys nothing but success in your uh, creative and professional endeavors. And I will look forward to seeing you on social media. Thanks everyone.